Hello, 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 everyone. This is your friend and your brother, Evangelist Brighton Mwanza. I welcome you all to this undiluted gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before we start, shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, want to bless you, want to honor your holy name, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty. This is the day that you have made for us to rejoice and to be glad in you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O Lord, that we may listen to this word. May this word of God find room in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Dear brethren, this is your friend and your brother, evangelist Brighton Mwanza, we are looking at the important topic, dear ones. So make sure you like, you subscribe, you share, you comment, and tell us where you are watching us from. This is your friend and your brother, Evangelist Brighton Mwanza. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be here, dear child of God, as we are sharing the word of God. The the Bible tells me that in the beginning was the way, and the way was with God, and the way was God. Hallelujah. And nothing was made minus the word of God. Hallelujah. So to, the, today we are looking at the important topic, the divine faith that, yes, the divine faith that, 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 tells you and that moves the heart of God. The divine faith that moves the heart of God. Hallelujah. This is a very important topic in our situation as we are walking with God. The divine faith. What is it? The divine faith that moves the heart of God. The divine faith that moves the heart of God. Hallelujah, dear child of God. Let us read from the book of Matthew, chapter number, Matthew, chapter number 8, verse 5 to 13. Matthew, chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. The Bible reads, When Jesus had entered Capernaum, Capernaum a centurion, came to him and asked him for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you home under my roof, but you just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a, a man under authority, with the soldiers under me. I tell, I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. Hallelujah. I said to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with great faith. I said to you that, I said to you that men will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the subject of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And this servant was healed at that very hour. Hallelujah. Dear child of God, once more, I will come you to this undiluted gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God has got power, dear child of God. If you have got faith, the word of God has power. 
Hallelujah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And whatever God created, he used his word. And the Bible tells me to say, they sent for the word, and the word healed them. So the word of God has got power to heal. They sent for the word, and the word of God healed them. Which means God's words has got power to heal. God's word has got power to deliver. God's word has got power to intervene into your situation. And the Bible tells me to say, Jesus Christ, he is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Jesus Christ, he is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. He is the same God. He doesn't change. He is the living God. For you to have, for you to see the miracle into your life, you need to have the divine faith that moves the heart of God, that moves the heart of Jesus. A good example which you have just read in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 5. Matthew is recording the undiluted gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's telling us to say, once upon the time, there was this essential person. In our daytime, we can call this person, he was an army commander, a soldier. Okay? This army commander or a soldier, the Bible tells us to say he had his servant who was ill and he loved his servant. Even if the Bible doesn't tell us to say he had gone to and fro looking for, for healing for this for this his servant, I believe he did that. At last, he had to run to Jesus Christ. So, child of God, where do you learn to when you are experiencing problems, when you're experience, experiencing challenges? Where do you put your faith? Where is your faith? Do you just cry? Or do you just kneel down and look to Yahweh and say, Yahweh, take over. I decrease so that you increase. Do you do that? If you don't do that, I urge you to do the needful, to learn to Jesus. Because when this centurion ran to Jesus, despite him being the soldier, despite him being the army commander, he went to Jesus and he knelt down to say, Jesus, I need your help. My servant is sick, homesick, can't do any work. And Jesus Christ said, where is, where is that home? I said, I don't want you to come to my home, but just say a word. Just say a word. One word is enough. Just say a word. One word is enough. This centurion, he understood. This centurion, he understood. This soldier, his army commander, he understood. Okay? The power of God's word. The authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. He understood the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. He understood. Do you understand the power of God? Do you really understand to say God's way has got so much power to transform your life, to change your life, to change that marriage that you are suffering, to heal that child? Do you understand to say God's power can change that problem that you are facing. Do you really understand? So God's power, God's word has got so much power to change your situation, to change your destiny, to change your story. Do you really understand? So God's word is still, is still living and 
active and sharper than any other two-edged sword which can heal and deliver. Do you really understand? So God's word, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth with his word. Do you really understand that God's word created the animals? God's word created the earth. God's word created the, the trees. God's word created the lion, the giraffe. God's word, just by his word, he created everything. Do you really understand? We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. And I, uh, I've come to, to share with you, to tell you, dear child of God, that there is something that, that you carry. It is called, in English language, they call it the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Satan knew it because he used to have it. He corrupted it. It is called, in English language, the anointing. The anointing, dear child of God, breaketh the yoke. The anointing, dear child of God, breaketh the case. What are you going through right now? The word of God is so living and active and sharper. The word of God right now can heal you. What sickness are you suffering from? What disease are you going through? Surrender your life to Christ. And God is going to heal you. God is going to meet you at the very point of your need. Because God's word is living and active and sharper. More than two HD sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Hallelujah. So, dear child of God, I, I want you to be good with the Holy Spirit. Tell him what you want. This centurion, this soldier, he knew where to run to. He ran to Jesus. He ran to Jesus. I urge you to run to him. And when he ran there, he said, Jesus, please, I want you to heal my servant. Which means, I, this soldier, this army commander, he was so humbled. He was so humble. And the Bible tells me about the immunity to say, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. So this soldier, he knelt down, say, please, please, heal my servant. So Jesus Christ said, ah, let's go to, to your home. Let's go to that home where my servant, your servant is. He said, no, no, please, 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 don't come uh, to my, not worthy in short, not worthy, don't come to my house. My house is not worthy to accommodate you. Then the word of God tells me, he said, this guy, he said, please only say a word because me also, I know the importance of authority. I know the importance of the, of the word because I am a man under authority. When I say, I have my servants, I have my workers, when I say to this one, go, he goes. When I say to another, come, he comes. When I say to another, do this, they do it, he, do, he, he does it. So you can see, just say a word, I'm able. He understood the power that is in the word of Jesus. Do you really understand the power that is in the, in the word of God? And Jesus Christ, when he, say, he heard that, he said, I have never seen anyone who has faith in Israel like this man. So in that faith, that this soldier moved the heart of God. The faith of this soldier moved the heart of God. Do you have that faith? If you don't have that faith, you are asking yourself. You are asking yourself, say, what, what should I do to have this faith like this man? 
The Bible tells me that in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, consequently, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Read the word of God. As you are listening to this word of God, your faith will grow because Jesus Christ he healed a lot of people and is still healing even today. His power doesn't expire. His power doesn't change. His power is so tangible, dear child of God. Hallelujah. So excited to be here. Tell us where you're watching us from. Make sure you subscribe. If you're watching us live on Facebook, make sure you like our Facebook page. You like, you comment, and share. If you're watching us on, on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can contact us, right? You can contact us using the number showing under your screen, on the bottom of your screen. You can contact us. We are your friend. So, dear, dear children of God, this Jesus that we are talking about, when you went to Lazarus, when Lazarus, Lazarus, was dead when he went to the tomb he was dead for four days when he went to the tomb he said lazarus come forth he used what his word he used his word so that's what i'm i'm saying we are not saving a dead god and the dead person the bible records in the book of john chapter 11 the bible said the dead man came back to life. Just, just said, Lazarus, come forth. So you can see for yourself. You say, Jesus' words, they are still living. They are still active. They are still sharper. What is your situation that is dead? That Jesus is about to bring it to life. Jesus is about to bring dead spiritual life back to life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is still living, active, and still doing wonders, even today. He doesn't change. His power doesn't change. And the Bible tells me to say, when Jesus Christ said, I've never seen a man who has faith like a centurion. Jesus Christ said to this centurion person, this soldier, say, go, according to your faith, your servant, is healed. And the Bible records to say, at that particular hour, that servant was healed, instantly healing. Hallelujah. God's want to heal instantly right now. Those who are watching, may God, may your heart be healed. May your, those wounded, wound, those hearts that have been broken, God is the one who wants to mend those hearts. You have been disappointed for too long. God wants to, to deliver you. You have been looking for a solution. God has come with a solution. You have been looking for a spouse. God will bring a spouse for you. You have been looking for a job. I, I can assure you, you say God is going to provide a job for you but all you need to do is you have to take the step of faith you have, if you have been trained as a teacher take a step of faith put on that that necktie put on that that suit put a, you look presentable and visit any school and tell them to say i have come to work if you are in mess if you are if you are in the medical field make sure Put on that, okay, put on that medical uniform and visit any hospital clinic and tell them to say, I've come to do what? To work. And again, I assure you to say, they, will not, they won't say no. And they will give you that platform. That is faith. That is divine faith. Okay? So, dear child of God, Make sure you subscribe.
If you are watching us on Facebook, make sure you like our Facebook page because you are sharing nothing but the undiluted gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bridal Mother TV is all about transforming lives. May the life, may your life be transformed by God's word, of course, and by the power of God. This centurion, he understood the power of God's word. He understood the power of God's word. What is it that you want to see in your life? What change you want to see in your life? What destiny do you want to see in your life? Open your mouth to him today and kneel down to him and can I guarantee you to say Jesus Christ is going to visit you. One word is enough to change your situation. One word from God is enough to heal you. One word from God is enough to comfort you. One word from God is enough to provide you with a job. One word is enough to provide you with a spouse. One word is enough to provide you with your beautiful family. One word is enough to make sure that your husband stops drinking and become a, a saved person. One word is enough. Is enough. So Tell him to say, God, I need one word. Tell him today, say, God, I need one word. One word is enough. What is it that you want from God? I've come to tell you to say, one word from God is enough. For you, my brother, for you, my sister, just one word is enough. What is it that you want to see in your life? What is it? Do you want to see a breakthrough? Ask for one word from God. One word is enough. This centurion person said, please, my Lord, don't just come under my roof. I'm not worthy. Because he understood that Jesus Christ, he was God. His house is too, was too small. Just say a word. He understood how big, how great Jesus Christ is. Even in his word. Okay. Let's look also in the same book. Matthew chapter number 9, verse 18. While he was saying this, a ruler came and kneeled down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her, and she will leave. Jesus got up and went with him, and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. And Jesus turned and saw her. Take her daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. When Jesus was, just entered the Lord's house and saw the fruit players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him and the cloud had been put outside. He went in and took the girl by the hand and he got, she got up. News of this spread throughout the region. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ performed many signs and wonders when he walked on the surface of the earth. One of them was this person. We are not even told the name of this lady. But when you read in the other gospel, like Luke or Mark, we are told to say, this lady spent 
every dime, every coin that he had spent on medicine, but to no avail. But he remained with one faith that moved Jesus. He said, if only I can touch his garment, I'll be healed. Hallelujah. If only I can touch Jesus' garment, I'll be healed. And he touched the garment of Jesus. And Jesus asked, who has touched me? And remember, Jesus used to move in crowds. And the disciples said, Lord, we are a Lord here. Eh? We are a Lord. And everyone can touch you. They didn't understand what Jesus was asking. And Jesus turned and saw this woman. And he knelt down and said, it's me, Lord. He said, go away. Your faith has healed you. So we are looking at the divine faith that touched the hand of God. That touched the heart of God. That touched the heart of Jesus. That's what we are looking at today. So dear child of God, continue to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. I don't know who wants to hear this word, but I've come to tell you, say, do not lose heart hope. There is light after the tunnel. The tunnel. There is light after this tunnel. Help is on the way. So, hold on to Jesus. Hang on to him. Not leave him. Because he loves you. He cares for you. Hallelujah. So, maybe you are here and you are saying, Preacher man, I've heard this word of God and I want to experience the transformed life of Christ. I've not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart to be my Lord and to be my personal Savior. I have not yet repented my sin. I want him to be my Lord. I want him to be my Savior. So, I want you to pray after me. You are saying, I want to surrender my life to him so that I may experience the life, the winning life of Christ. You are saying those words. Pray after me with all your heart. Make sure this prayer, this prayer, make it to be your own. I did that in 1999, and from that time, I've never looked back. From that time, I've never looked back. I can assure you to say, this life that I'm talking about is the life of Christ. So, surrender your life to him today. So that on that day, he will say, well done, my faithful servant. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you the way I am. I repent of every sin that I've done. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Lord Jesus, write my name in the book of life and delete my name in the book of hell. In the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. In in my new journey of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So if you have prayed that prayer, there is a phone number that is scrolling down under the screen. Can you WhatsApp us your details? would like to send you materials that will, that will help you to grow spiritually in the things of God. 
like you share with you and the little materials of the gospel that will help you to grow spiritually in the things of God. Comment in the comment section once more. Congratulations. Welcome to God's family. Find a Bible-believing church near you. Make sure you read the word of God daily. Make sure you pray without ceasing. Make sure you intercede for your family members. You intercede, dear child of God. So I've talked about find a Bible. Pray without ceasing and make sure you do what pleases God. Because God loves you so much. He cares for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Cares for you, dear child of God. You were created for a purpose. You were created for a time such as this. Baba tells me that the world is waiting for the true manifestation of the sons of God. Manifest right now in your life. Manifest right now. Manifest. It's your time to manifest. It's your time to move from one level to the other. Because God loves you, cares for you. He already said on the cross of Calvary to say, it is finished. When he said that, he really meant it. He won the battle already for you, my brother, for you, my sister. Yes, he said in his way to say, in this world there will be a lot of problems, but take heart. I've done what? I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. Hallelujah. So make sure you contact us using the number scrolling down on your screen or inbox us or WhatsApp us or comment in the comment section. Leave a comment. Hallelujah. And this time around, I would like to pray. I would like to pray once you have divine faith that will move the heart of God. Those who are saying we want divine faith, that will move the heart of God. So pray. Open your mouth. If there's a praying for you, open your mouth because God is about to do a new thing, brother. God is about to do a new thing for you, my sister. God is about to do a new thing for you, our family members. God is about to do a new thing. So shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you, bless you. May you begin to do a new thing for that brother of mine, for that sister of mine. May you begin to do a new thing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Lord. May you turn around things in our life, in our favor, in our, apart from you, in the name of Jesus. We cancel whatever the enemy has planted. In the name of Jesus, we are pluted. We are pluted. Whatever the enemy has planted in the lives of your sons and your daughters, right now. Yes, I pray for that one who has been looking for a job, who has, who has been graduated, who was graduated some time back. Now he hasn't found the job. Four years ago he was graduated. Up to now he's still searching for a job. I pray for him or her. Right now, my God and my Father. I, I, May you arise, let your enemies scatter in the name of Jesus, grant him the job. That one was looking for the spouse to marry. I pray for them. May you give them the right partner in the name of Jesus. We come against it. Anything that's not of God, we are blue whatever the enemy has planted in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. We pray God of for that one. But that one, God Almighty, who is looking for employment, who is looking for his power, who is traveling right now, I pray for them for traveling messages in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. King of glory, we bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. May you arise. Let your enemies scatter in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. This is the hour. And in Jesus' name, Satan, lose your hold. Lose your hold. Deliver. We are praying for that one. We are praying for that one. My God and my Father who need breakthrough. May they receive a breakthrough from above. In the name of Jesus. May you alone transform lives. 
May you transform lives. Enough is enough. May you transform lives. We are praying for that one who has received Jesus Christ today. May they walk in the authority. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Who has gained our hearts? Amen and amen. Dear child of God, may God literally, literally bless you. Thank you very much for watching. God richly bless you. This has been your friend and your brother. Vendor is bread on one signing off. God bless from my heart that we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our country. Just upon my heart, dear child of God, we need to pray for our country, Zambia. So shall we pray? Father in heaven, we pray for our country, Zambia. We dedicated it to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Father God, who commit our country into your hands. We are praying for the heads of state, uh, the head of, the, of state. We are praying for the vice uh, head of state. We are praying for the prime ministers. We are praying for the counselors. We are praying, God Almighty, for uh, council chairperson and everyone who is in, in a higher position, no authority. We surrender them to you, God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, King of glory, arise and bless them. Meet them at that point of their need. We are praying against bloodshed, any destruction in Zambia. We counsel in Jesus' name. Arise, God Almighty. This is your hour. This is your time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you share, you comment. This is a friend and your brother, Brother Mwanza, signing off. Bye-bye.